Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Yusuf I'm going to show you uh, this nice case uh, that we had uh, uh, a rare complication uh, and how to manage it. So, it's, uh, so far, the routine case is uh, cortical uh, plus two cataract with a history of trauma about two years ago. Uh, but I didn't see any signs of trauma in the eyes, uh, but uh, you will see it's probably hidden somewhere. Okay. And so far, the the two main incisions, vitrax, uh, capsule rexus, the routine steps, nothing unusual. Uh, capsule rexus measured uh, 5.5 millimeters in diameter, and we'll see that this will help us at the end of the surgery. Routine hydrodissection, uh, hydrodelineation and nuclear rotation. This is nothing unusual so far. Uh, nucleus rotated, uh, hydrosected naturally as regular cases. Come for the FACO. Uh, we use the Sovereign Y star and uh, uh, routinely use the chopping technique. Here comes the chopper. Everything is going well so far. Neurus has been divided, rotated well, no problems. And all of a sudden, if you can l see the upper temp, uh, the upper nasal uh, heminucleus is now deeper. All of a sudden, just deepened, and went uh, further out. And wasn't sure what's happening, but it wasn't the usual. So I uh, tried to to move it inwards. I'm um, not sure what was happening because there was nothing happening apart from that. So I tried to pull it toward the phaco, but it went even further. And so I tried to I removed the chopper and went to go, go get a needle to, uh, to do a posterior set levitation, but it's already gone. Uh, the, he the first hemineucleus is gone down to the vitreous. Uh, there was a big rent. I tried to go with the vitrax through the paracentesis, but uh, it, it's a little bit bigger, and it, the other part didn't give me a chance. It went uh, right in the second hemi uh, nucleus, went right in through the big rent in the upper nasal quadrant of the of the capsule. The capsule rex is okay. It's just she has a big rent in the uh, in this area and uh, just uh, swallowed the whole thing. So I filled the anterior chamber and the, the part of the rent with the vitrax to prevent vitreous from happening, uh, coming forward. And so far there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber. Uh, so I filled it with the uh, vitrax and I'll switch, um, I'll enlarge the, uh, the paracentesis to the size that would admit the, uh, uh, the uh, vitrectomy probe. That's the vitrectomy was started. Uh, there's no much vitreous here, it's just um, we're going to use it to clear the cortical interior that's left in the capsular bag. And this is very important to avoid the inflammation that would happen and optimize the results as far as we can. Okay. So, very carefully, uh, you, you use the irrigation aspiration cut mode of the uh, vitrectomy machine. So it's you, you irrigate, you aspirate so that you can pull out the cortical material and if you find vitreous you can increase the steps to, to step 3 of the uh, foot switch to, to have a cut. So this way you can remove the cortical material. Okay. So far it's going well. Okay, so uh, I'm done the access from this side, but I need the access from the other side to up lower nasal to be able to access this uh, uh, temporal part. So I, I started another paracentesis using the MVR blade, and I'll put the uh, retractor through that, that part. I'm using the, the bimanual handpiece as a bimanual vitrectomy. This way you can uh, direct the uh, infusion better. 
you can see it's uh, removed very very easily we clean the the capsule of material the posterior capsule the remaining of the posterior capsule that that has no use for us so we can remove that to improve the visual results you can see the fragment uh, of the heminucleus uh, in the, the shadow in the back uh, of the chamber and then we'll uh, so far, there's no vitreous in the interior chamber. It's just that uh, we use the vitrectomy to remove, to clean up the uh, cortical remaining cortical material. So uh, I use the helon to uh, open the sulcus to implant the lens. So what we'll do, I'll implant the regular lens, which is the uh, ER uh, the um, the Technus acrylic ZA nine thousand and three uh, into the sulcus. The haptics will be in the sulcus, and I'll push the optic into the through the capsule rexus, which uh, which holds the lens in the regular position, so actually you don't need to change the power of the intraocular lens, and and this creates avoids the 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 iris dispersion, uh, iris pigment dispersion from the sulcus implants. So if you put it that way, you avoid this uh, 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 pigment dispersion. So you make sure that the first haptic is in the sulcus. And then deliver the second haptic. You usually use a Sinsky here uh, to be able to uh, position it well. So now the first haptic is in the sulcus, the second haptic is out. Now the two haptics are getting into the sulcus. Okay, and I push the lens through the optic to have uh, to, to, uh, to the optic through the capsule rexus to keep it in place. This way it's away from the iris. We do the irrigation aspiration to remove uh, any helon that's left in the interior chamber and so far there's no vitreous so uh, what I did uh, after that is any uh, any time I implant a lens in the sulcus uh, I'll inject uh, carbostat to close the pupil you find this they find the pupil is getting smaller and I'm hydrating the the wound uh, the main wound is and uh, some of the air bubble went in uh, through with the with that. It's going to absorb in a few uh, hours. Uh, the pupil is getting smaller. The, whenever we implant in the sulcus, we we inject uh, something to close down the uh, like myostat to close down the pupil, myostat, carbostat, or uh, uh, polycarpine to to close down the pupil to make sure that the lens is in good position and there's no capture. Thank you very much.